Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to the first installment of the Science Unit Seminars slash Movies. Um, I think many of you have seen the, the, the handout. We have a list of several, I guess, for this semester. Actually, there's several uh, movies that we're offering through core curriculum. So if you're interested in the environment, uh, ecology, sustainability, uh, keep your eye out for these, these events. <clears throat> so uh, today I'd like to uh, introduce to you the speaker, uh, Professor Yong Woon Lin. He is a professor at Seoul National University. Um, and he studies fungi and mushrooms. Um, and I'll just tell you a little bit about his background. Um, so he's, he studied fungi and mushrooms for graduate school. Uh, he actually, one, I think, unique thing about his background is he worked in the government for some time before going back to uh, academia, which I think is a really, gives us a really interesting perspective. Uh, you know, government just always needs some results, some application, some product. Uh, so you'll see in this that uh, he really is able to take uh, a subject like fungi, where you might think, well, what is the importance of fungi? Why do we mean fungi? And really make you understand and believe that it's important and useful. Uh, and again, I, I feel very lucky in particular because uh, when I was working in Korea, I was in his laboratory. So it was very, I learned a lot from him and very nice to work with uh, one of the fungal experts in, in Korea. So would you all help me uh, welcome Professor Liu to I would like to thank to uh, Professor Jonathan from first he invited me here and I'm very glad to uh, to uh, just a teaching or lecture to you. First when I uh, got an email from him I started a graduate student. So uh, I just bring my uh, the research vision. But later he said the un under <coughs> student. So I quickly yesterday, the day before yesterday, a little bit of modified and then I made it easily. I try my best to understand you. And then uh, my English is not good, but you are not familiar with the fungi, so I'm pretty sure this teaching will be perfect today. Okay. So uh, when I visited in this university, I saw that this one. Do you think what it looks like? Oh, that's amazing. It looks like a mushroom. <laughs> it's my okay, This university welcome me. Okay. See, the mushroom and mushroom is very similar. Right? And so I was very happy. Okay, today I'm going to just explain about the what, what are the fun time. And then, and then briefly explain what I have done in my laboratory. So, uh, some of you uh, heard about the uh, fungi or mushrooms. Okay, so every day you eat mushrooms, but many of them is not related with fungi. Then the fungus means that fungus is originated from green, and that one absorbs water, right? So it means that fungus is really like the humid conditions. When they dry, they cannot grow. But humid conditions, they quickly absorb the water and then grow in mycelium and then form the like this green body. You know that even the 20 centimeters in mushrooms, just only two hours. Okay, it means 70 or 80 percent is the water. Okay, and then they discharge the spore and the pollen down quickly. So that's why the meaning is the fungus and the fungus. Okay. And then what is the fungus? The fungus definition is for the eukaryotes, it means DNA enclosed by the nucleus, okay, so like us. 
And the second one is most of the formulas is growing like the uh, mycelium, so it looks like a bread. Okay. So the uh, yeast and that is the formulas is growing unicellular across it. The uh, single cell grows, but most of them is grows like this one. Okay. And then third one is they don't have chloroplasts. It means they cannot photosynthesis. So they need the energy or nutrient, and then they got energy from other organisms. So like us, exactly. So that is called heterotroph. And then they just reproduction is bisexual and asexually. There are so many different words. They use word about the fungi and the mold and mushroom, something like that, right? And the mold is a bad meaning. Okay. So uh, something like the when you just uh, really humidity and then the fungus is growing like this and then smells bad. So uh, that is really bad meaning. So a uh, mushroom. So that is you can see the uh, naked eye. Okay. So normally this meaning is from the agriculture and food biology. So uh, the mushrooms looks like edible mushrooms. The meaning is fine. Okay. And the yeast, you know, the yeast is very popular. Okay, so for fermentation, in this one is a very important role in fermentation. Okay, the fungi is required to develop or derive animal or drive the organism. So it means quite the evolved one. It's very close to a uh, animal. Okay. So uh, normally the mushroom is yeah, growing in forests. So uh, previously, all the people thought that one is closely related to wood plants. But genetically, that one is very close to us. You see, the phylogenetic tree, the fungi is divided by the uh, animal. So that one's close relationships. And the plant is quite far. So uh, if you just kill the fungi, and then very famous to us. Okay. So uh, this fungi actually, the quite old times they derived from the bacteria and evolved, right? And then they live in the aquatic environment. It means ocean. And then they evolve, and then they need the nutrient from the other animals. So, for example, fishes or whatever. <coughs> but the plant and the insect independently, they just move to to the land area. And then this fungus is follow the, the plant and animal. So still, this fungus is kill the insect and get an energy or nutrient. But the later, you know, is so many plants is just, just growing on the land. So the fungus is just notice that there are many food in plant instead of the insect or animal. You know, the fungus, if they follow the animal, it's difficult. The animal is, can fly and then they can work, but fungus is, cannot fly, cannot run. It. So uh, they're always waiting and then like, slowly growing the mycelium and the kill the insect. But the plant is not moving. So uh, then it's easier to kill the, the plant and then get an energy. So uh, they jump up to a plant. And then right now there are so many the uh, fungi causes their crop disease and then so that's why the uh, human really hate the fungus, right? Because we are competing with the, our the crop or food. So uh, I can divide the, uh, this fungus according to their nutrition mode. If that fungus is take the nutrient from that material. It means that is the saprotroph. Okay, so they can degrade everything. Okay, so they can energy from dead material or dead animal, dead plant, or even like this. Okay, and on oil, whatever. It means they can degrade it's by enzyme. So they have uh, so many different kind of enzyme. It means. The another another meaning is the uh, application is so nice uh, resources in. Okay, so uh, these fonts are growing everywhere. Okay, some fonts are can grow in the living organisms. So uh, that is the uh, infections with the living insect and the even your you know the nail. 
and then a living plant and living tree. So these are called pathogenic fungus. And then this one is pathogenic wood fungus. And this one is pathogenic human pathogen. <coughs> And then this one is the, uh, you may heard about the zombie fungi. that I can explain it later. <laughs> and also, uh, you know, the environment, there are so many fungus and bacteria, they are competing. In this case, it's very difficult to get energy or nutrient. So some of them is just, uh, you know, cooperate with other organisms. So uh, this one is, you may saw uh, many uh, national geography or whatever. And then this ant is carries small leaves. Why? They want to be? No, they actually cultivate the fungus inside. Okay? So this leaf is substrate for ant, not their own food. Okay? So it means they cultivate the mushrooms and then they eat the mycelium. Inside of mycelium, there are a lot of proteins and nutrients. And so many nutrients are there. What? What? How? The, what? Benefits of fungus. This this ant keep keep the fungus, and then so when they move to another another house, big one, and then bring that that fungus. Okay, so they don't need to spread their offspring because the ant keep that population. And this one is orchid. Okay, so orchids can leave the uh, oligotropic environment. It means less nutrient. Because inside of that, there are many different kind of uh, uh, fungi growing, growing in there. And then they absorb the many minerals from the environment and then provide the algae. And then this is three species. And then 99 or 97, depending on the reference. And then there are so many different uh, three species have a symbiotic relationship with mushrooms. If without in this relationship, they cannot survive in, in the wild area. Of course, they can grow so long in the greenhouse, but why they cannot grow? And what is this? Do you know this? This one is a lichen. Lichen is the fungus infraction with protobion, the algae or bacteria, photosynthetic bacteria. So normally this one is growing in the Arctic area. So uh, the fungus provides inorganic material, and then the photobiont provides yeah, photosynthetic materials, organic materials. You see this one is the root, and then uh, glomerular microta, the endomycorrhiza, that normally grow inside of the cell, and then provide the uh, nutrient, absorb the nutrient from outside, nearby the root, and then give them to an okay. And then this kind of a mushroom is ectomycorrhiza. Ectomycorrhiza means the mycelium or the surface of root area. And the mycelium is spread and live longer. And then they take the nutrient from outside of soil and then give them to a plant. And then they got an energy from the plant the uh, carbon source. Okay. And also there are many fungus is edible directly bad benefit to us. Okay? So uh, you you every day is you know these fungus give us the food and the Bulbaria la Bulbatus pages from mushroom that is famous in Thailand, Tom Yang Kung is that mushroom. And then this one is the shiitake, uh, very famous in Japan, or I, I'm not sure here it is. And then I got a whispers, that is about the mushrooms, that is good for salad. Now what about the other one, traditional food and beverages? So you know the yeast, Saccharomyces cerevisiae. I cannot imagine if without the yeast, you know, the alcohol cream, and then bread, the soft bread, Okay, if there are no uh, the this yeast, we cannot drink alcohol and then we cannot eat the soft soft bread. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is the penicillium. So penicillium of course will uh, give us to uh, uh, antibiotics. So we can live longer for now. 
but also there are many penicillin different species give us you know, the very nutrient. And then this one is a cheese. What made of? Cheese made from milk, right? So just a milk and then very hard and then no taste, right? But if some fungus is growing inside, they just produce and what is that? The gas. Okay? And then they grow inside like this, the blue color, that is from the penicillium. So uh, first time, the uh, taste is, and then something different taste. But it's not bad. So I try to eat, because if normally the contaminated fungus and the people doesn't like it, oh, if I die, <laughs> right? But still alive and the taste is good. So the uh, first the contaminant one is just to try to, hey, try, try the neighbor, two neighbor. And then, oh, fine, we will make this one and sell it. Okay? So that's why the uh, blue veiny cheese is a produce. Okay? And the other one is the yeah, common berry, penicillin and common berry tea. That strain is growing in cheese, <laughs> and then they degrade the uh, hard cheese. So make soft. Okay? So you, you, you know that the common bear and breeds, and then if there are no this kind of a fungi, you can always you know, chop and then, how can I say, and then trim the hard cheese. And very, very helpful. And then the equally important role in ecology. So uh, as I said, the 99% of plant interaction should be interaction with the mushroom, right? And then uh, this one is connected with a different kind of a tree and then control them. If this tree is weak and then this mycelium just get an energy and then provide them, okay, the make balance. But still, still continuously weak and then no more stop providing them the nutrient and then kill. In this case, it's different kind of a mushroom is growing and then quickly degrade the beginning and cellulose. You know what the cellulose and the beginning is very complicated com uh, the chemicals and very difficult to degrade degradation. Okay? If without this fungus and the, we, we have no space to live because just one tree the uh, degradation of one tree is take the one million. So uh, you can imagine so without this farmers, no species will really. Okay. Okay, there are many farmers interaction with the plant. Okay, see. So uh, if you just go to trail in the mountains in the dead dead wood or fallen dead fallen wood, you can find that there are many mushrooms. Normally they are growing inside of wood and they degrade the cellulose and ligony. They take the uh, nutrient from them, and then the, all the other one just you know provide the soil. It means nutrient recycle. Okay. And also uh, they grow in here, but many of them is really good for medicine. I will explain later. Okay. And other part is there are many mushrooms. That one is you know what uh, that kind of shapes. And many of them are interaction with ectomycorrhizal symbiosis with the plant. Okay, as I mentioned to uh, this one. Okay, so uh, previously people know about that the interaction with the uh, mycelium is connected with many different. But two years ago, the scientists showed that there evidence in science. Okay, so almost forty percent they can exchange. Okay, and tree and tree. Directly cannot exchange, but between the you know, fungus and then fungus in, uh, intermediate root and root. Yeah. Of course, some of the plant cannot can grow without the fungi, but still inside there are uh, opportunities. Opportunities the fungus is still growing in there. And this kind of a plant can live without the plant. But if there are some plants, they can grow quickly and then they have more resistance with others. And then this amazing one, plant 
Okay, plenty is always not not a cost. Okay, they actively they also take the energy from fungus. The fungus normally many fungus in symbiotic relationship with the plant and got energy from plant. But this, you see, this plant that is a ghost plant. See the white color. It means there are no chloroplast. It means they cannot photosynthesis. How come they get energy or nutrient or carbon source? So inside the root, this plant get an energy from the mycelium in the soil. Okay. So uh, sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Here, that mycelium is interaction with the root, and then the uh, this tree is photosynthesis, maybe carbon. And then carbon moves to a uh, root, and but uh, the mycelium is take carbon source from root. And then this one is convert carbon to different shape. So this tree wanted to get back the carbon source, but already the carbon has been changed, it's different to shape. So uh, this car this tree cannot use that carbon. But this this plant can use that sugar. So uh, that one is smart. I don't want to, you know what? This one is a really tiny plant, and then this one like to uh, the shade area. So uh, no sunlight, and then very difficult to photosynthesis. So give up, they take the energy from fungus. That is easier, right? So a smarter strategy. Another one is, this one is the orchid. But also this orchid, they don't have the chloroplast. So they cannot photosynthesis as well. And, but this one is cool. more small, even the seed, they cannot germinate itself. Okay? So uh, germinate, in order to germinate this seed, they need this fungus activity. Okay? So uh, if there are no this fungus, the seed cannot germinate. Okay? When they germinate, they cannot grow. What they need? They need energy source. So another, another different fungus. This one is the very famous pathogenic fungus. Really wide area. The whole, you know, this one I didn't uh, put it in here scale, but, but really be or ten times bigger than in this university. Or uh, conif tree is die because this fungus is famous. The pathogenic fungus, but. Anyway, this fungus growing in this orchid take the nutrient from this fungus. So the people just cultivate, in order to cultivate this one, and then they need to a two fungus. And then cultivate this root, and that is very good for health and the make the applicate medicinally fine. And also I'm gonna introduce about the uh, different interactions with insects. Okay, many of them is the yeah, interactions with the fungus, but you have heard about the zombie fungi. And then many of the fungus, they can specifically infect the insect. Okay, normally this fungus is growing in mycelium in the soil. And then just looking forward, there are so many, so many uh, insects living in soil. But specifically that fungus recognize which one is my host. Okay, and then if they found their own host and then start infection. They have the infections and then they don't kill them directly. And then wait, wait till they go out. And then these uh, insects go outside and then they start to make a fluid body. That is easier to make a spore and then spread outside. If they form the fluid body inside of soil, they can spread their soil. So that's why they wait. Okay. So uh, depending on the uh, mycelium color, this one is called white muscarin. That one is green muscarin because their spore color is different color. The white color and this one is green color. And also, uh, this one is the famous cordyceps. That is very famous and expensive. 
But many of them is like this and kill the insect and then they just you know take the energy or nutrient. But some of them is cooperate with any uh, insect. Some of them is the ambrosia beetle and ambrosia fungus. That is mountain pine beetles that kill the whole you know 20 years and conifer. And then North America is really a severe problem in mountain pine beetle. And then this mountain pine beetle is just a two millimeter insect. But they just fly out to find a new healthy conifer and then make a hole and then they just build the gallery. Okay. When they gallery, they make gallery and then they carry the mycetia inside of the bag, they carry the small spore of fungi. And then when they just during they make the gallery, the spore is infected the tree and they kill the tree. Okay, normally the pine tree they just produce less. It's not good for the living inside. But this fungus is killed the tree, so no more resin. It means this larvae is the make a good condition to the larvae live. And then the larvae is hatchers and then they just eat mycelium as well. Okay, when they just grown up, then also they carry this fungus to other other tree. They, they are all symbiotic relationships for a long time. But fortunately, when it's a small number of fungus causes disease in human or animals, just the 200 species, the compared to plants, and then compared to other one is quite a less species. Okay, so uh, this is just background the, about the fungus. And then I will explain what I'm doing in my laboratory. Okay, so we are doing the uh, basically taxonomy or classifications in phylogeny, biology, diversity, something like that. Okay. So nowadays in our laboratory, three postdocs and then seven graduate students and technicians. They are all fungi and fungals. Okay, we work together. Uh -huh. Okay, this is the uh, fungi, fungal phylogeny. <coughs> so why do they have ecology and phylogeny? So always taxonomy and ecology is very, you know, closely related. If we understand ecology, uh, we can understand the evolution. You have seen the CS, CSI, right? The young generation, everybody know about Right, right. And then, why is this important thing is in CSI? If somebody dies, then what is the first option? Okay, we have to check people die, their identity, right? And then next one is who killed, right? And then third one is he died here or the other place, and then moved to here, right? And that is the third one. This approach is quite similar to taxonomy we are doing. Okay? So what is the taxonomy? Taxonomy means giving the name identity. You have all your own name. But before that, before got your names, I can separate you and the man and woman. Right? And then grade one and two, three and four, something like that, I can separate. Okay. So when I visited in here, so I met this and just the science, scientific units and just four. I can remember that Mark, Felina, and I mean. But more and more people if invited me, I can even remember, right? And then right now there are so many people in here, they have a different name, different shape. So I can distinguish in them, all of you, and then you have your own identity. But if that 1,000, 2,000, and then, you know what, there are so many people, they have a similar shape, right? Right now, you have a logo, and you are short, okay? And then, there are so many different characters, I can distinguish, right? But if you just take the cap, everybody cap, and then, very difficult to distinguish, because your character is small, small, okay? 
So uh, the old time just you know what uh, everybody know each other, but nowadays too many people live in. Especially I was surprised when I came here. There are so many apartments, really tall. Okay, there are so many people living there. I'm pretty sure. And then they know each other. No, I don't think so, right? But if you know each other, then I can understand the ecology. If I understand the ecology, and then I can understand the phylogeography or phylogeny. In that cases, I can understand the evolution. How we move to here, and then when move to here, and how we, you know, what the different shape. So uh, this one is just four sense. So first step is the taxonomy identity. So uh, I have to give their first name or their identity. So uh, when I was graduate students, I just started in identifications. When I just find some mushrooms and then you know open the picture book and then compare them, which one is the similar one? So name on it. And then later the more character need to be identification. So at the times I use this many not just morphology. And then microscopic feature using the microscope. And then later, and then more more character need. So people use that DNA sequence. Why DNA sequence we use? Okay. So in this case is for example the shape is just a simple floating body color. One or two, five characters, and then even the microscopic ca character, just the ten character is okay. But if what if the species is one hundred species, how did you distinguish them using the only ten characters? No way. But DNA sequence is if you amplify, determine the sequence in one kb, ten thousand characters you can use that. So that's why DNA sequence is very useful for taxonomy or classification. So nowadays, they're using many different DNA sequences using that, the distinctions or, you know, uh, distinctions or phylogenetic relationships. So if I just find a new species, that is the first time I found in the world, and then I can give them the name. And then species, you know what it means. First, new species, right? So I can give them names. And there's my name on that, yes, nomenclatures. Who's going to first find this one? And then give us some descriptions and characters. Okay. And also, uh, there are many other, other formulas isolated from marine area. And also nowadays, actually when I was graduate students, I just follow that the European books and the North American books because they started earlier. So uh, normally just compared to just the shape. But nowadays we recognize that when we compare to the DNA sequence, the Asian cell is quite different than European and the North American uh, species. So we propose many new species for now. And also different new species and we provide microscopic feature and the phylogenetic analysis as well. If that kind of sequence is information is final, and then we can do that here yeah, compare to each other. So we can we can discuss about the uh, how they evolve. They means the evolutionary study is possible, right? And then also compare to these DNA sequencing wizard and also their ecological behavior or shape or ecological habitat. Okay, for example, this one is the phylogenetic tree like this, and then compared to all the morphological shape, it's clearly matching. For example, this one is normally this fungus is growing, you know, growing on fallen branches in in a soil, first. And then the spore is really big, and the spine. And then this fungus is growing on the uh, dead tree, but I'm just on the top, one meter high or two meter high. And then the spore is really tiny, the very close related. But why this one just to be and spine and then the fruiting body just the fruit on the bottom of the forest? Actually, this one is spine. Their strategy is to spread by the animal. If the animal just uh, scrape in the uh, forest, and then they attach attach to this spore. So this fungus just 
you know, they spread their spore by animal or other small invertebrate animal. But this one is just make it smaller and then light one, so they just spread by wind. Okay, the smaller and then light one is just spread go farther, right? So that kind of strategy they have. Okay? And the other one is the, uh, the Russell Lactarius, this famous, and then you can go forest and you can easily find everywhere. And they are, they are very important ectomycorrhizal fungi. Many of them is ecto, the edible mushrooms. See, when I go to a forest and there are many uh, other animals, you know, sell, eat this uh, <coughs> mushroom. But this mushroom is quite difficult. Some of them is easily to identify, but morphologically quite similar but different species. Even the same species, the young one and mature one is quite different. Okay? So uh, where they grow and then which area they grow, and then the morphology is quite different. So uh, just based on morphology, it's very difficult to identify. So for example, when we just compare to uh, the other countries' food, and then when we collect these mushrooms, we identify with Lactarius so principles because the morphological code almost the same. Right? But when we uh, DNA sequence analysis, that is quite different. So we provide a new name, and also uh, these are the same. And also, this one is just a few characters, but there are so many, so many species that have been recorded in, in the world. So uh, we, you know, we just try to the uh, more sequencing and the analysis. You see, the previously identified was one name, but when we sequencing them, the all different. It means quite difficult to identify based on morphology. So. We just forget about that the morphological identity, identification, just the sequencing them, everything. And then the reverse, that is called the reverse taxonomy. So uh, we just re-identify them. So that, that kind of a method approach is very useful to us to find new, new formulas and the new record. And then, so in this method, we have a lot of paper that is easy to access. And then there are so many new records and the new species in Korea. I'm pretty sure that in Hong Kong as well. Okay. So the same. So we got a lot of databases and in the databases. So we pro uh, we made a picture books and then OGK fungi and then other one. Okay. Secondly, in my laboratory, under the pro uh, projects mainly I'm working on the uh, mushroom bank. It means these are resources is very important to applications. For example, this one is a phalaenus lintelus, and then previously this anti-cancer effect was very famous. And so this one is the uh, cancer cell line, the inhibit, the protect the growth in 97%. So at the time it was very, very famous when I was graduate students, that one one gram is ten US dollars. It means one kilogram, just one trading body like this, ten thousand dollars. It's so amazing. And then this one is the child mushrooms, and this one is good for Alzheimer. So there are so many different uh, effects. So uh, you know, applicate the medicine. Uh, always very useful. Uh, some sport can use that the uh, growth promoting and then uh, genetic resources and then mycelium can make a many flavonoid but bioactivity something like that. Okay, so uh, this one is very helpful. You see that is a plant that their root is like this, but mycelium is from outside. So take the nutrient from the environment. So and also give them to a competition competitor. And also many wood decay fungi can degrade the cellulose and the lignin. It means this fungus can degrade non non degradable material. So that is very good for environment. Okay. So bioremediations and bioremediations. 
and sometimes you use to a biofuel as well. And so now, these are all edible mushrooms, but many of them is just cultivations that fungus is sapro. It means they can grow dead material or straw, so that is easy to a cultivation. But still, there is a pine mushroom and purple that is very, very expensive in Asia and France. But this one is the obligated interactions with the plant, so a symbiotic relationship, so they can cultivate. If you cultivate this fungus, okay, just to start the study, and then you can give the rich man, okay? So this one is the medicinal fungus. It's a cell in National Park, in everywhere. But when I just look at it, oh, it looks like all different species. But the local people said that one is only one species. So no way. I just buy one of them and then separate. There are six different species mixed. But in cases, local people, they just get money from this medicinal fungus. If this fungus is famous for now, and then this one sell by under the name of this fungus. And then next year, this is going to be famous and the whole name has been changed. <laughs> it's nonsense, right? And also uh, some, you know, uh, the uh, chemistry or pharmacologist and the scientist, also they just work uh, working. If there is something in fact reported from in this fungus, and then they just go and marketplace and buy something, and then they experiment. But there are so many different things. The identity is wrong. And then so we went sampling in everywhere in the world, and then collect mushrooms, and then you see that one is when I went to Costa It's really nice mangrove forest. Can you see that this one is so beautiful? What did you see? What do you, can you see? What? The tree for mangrove? When I went there, so nice, and I saw the mushroom. Oh, okay? I can see only the mushroom, right? And then we collect many mushrooms and isolate and then identify using DNA sequence. And then yesterday, I went to the uh, Taipo Cow Nature Reserve with the yeah, professor John. This summer is quite dry, so uh, there are no uh, many uh, mushrooms, but um, we collect uh, some mushrooms. Okay, so uh, some beautiful mushrooms. So if you have interest, and in you can go for us, and you can see that. If you just look at it carefully, then you can find many of many of these mushrooms. Okay, so when I collect the mushrooms, always people ask me about the, okay, this is a poisonous or edible, okay? First times when I meet many people, always they ask me, hey, edible or poisonous? Okay, see, when I, okay, the perfect, don't ask me, ask Google, Dr. Google, okay? <laughs> the poisonous mushrooms is a part of everything. And some of them, that one is the edible mushroom, but why not? I totally trust the Google, Dr. Google, but see, there is something you know, wrong. And then edible mushroom, then there are, you know, some poisonous mushroom is mixed with the edible. When I went to Roko in Thailand, there was Siberia, and then the local people always say, oh, this is a very delicious edible. But when I saw that, there was some, you know, poisonous mushroom. So, I told them this one is a poison, poisonous mushroom. They said, oh, no way, it's okay, nobody just fine. Came back to me. Already go, and then the other side, they died. <laughs> How could they come back? No way. And also, this fungus, they are different. And some a strong poisonous mushroom is two hours later, die. And then some other fungus is 10 hours. Okay? The first symptom is just a diarrhea or vomiting. Okay. This uh, poisonous mushroom is very, very smart. Normally, they cannot fall in, in inside a forest. Just, you know, at the open, open, open place. Okay. So they just you know, show them to an animal or people. Okay, please take me and eat me. Okay. So the poison is located inside a spore. Okay. And then people or animals eating them, 
condensed two hours later, and then 10 hours later, they vomiting, and then they can start germination. Okay, that is a good strategy to dispose of their spore.